Number 11. A student drove to the university from her home and noted that the odometer reading of her car increased by 12.0 kilometers. The trip took 18 minutes. Letter A. What was her average speed? Okay, so let's write down what we're given. So it said that the odometer reading, right, increased by 12 kilometers. So that means the distance uh, that she traveled during uh, her trip was 12 uh, point zero kilometers. And it told us that the time in which it took her to, try, uh, to drive these 12 kilometers was 18.0 minutes. So now it asks us, what was her average speed? So we're looking for S. Now it doesn't ask for speed in kilometers per second or kilometers per minute or meters per second or whatever. So I'm probably just going to leave the units how they are to make it simple. But what we now need to think about is, do we know a mathematical relationship between these variables? And we do, right? We see that the speed of an object is equal to the distance that it travels divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. So speed here will equal 12.0 kilometers divided by 18.0 minutes. And when I do this math, right, plug it into the calculator, 12 divided by 18, that works out to be a 0 0.667 uh, kilometers per minute, because those were the units of speed that I used. And I have three significant figures here, and that matches the three significant figures um, of the measured values that were given to us. So this would be the speed for part A. Okay, let's move now on to uh, part B. So it says, if the straight line distance from her home to the university is 10.3 kilometers in a direction of 25.0 degrees south of east, what was her average velocity? Okay, so this gets a little confusing, I, I think. Um, first thing is, why don't we just draw a quick picture of maybe what they're talking about? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, actually let's label this part B over here. I'm going to draw a coordinate system very quickly. Let's say we have something like this. And it says that um, she is traveling at 25 degrees south of east. So here's the east direction. Here's the south direction. So she's traveling. Now well, that looks like 45, right? We've got to do about 25. It's probably still a little too much, but I think we get the idea. So she's traveling 25 degrees south of east, right? So this angle right here is 25 degrees. Okay, and it says that the straight line distance from her home, so let's, we'll say that this little dot represents her cozy little home. And the, I'll say the point out here rep uh, represents the cozy little university. All right, and it says that this distance that she traveled, the straight line distance, is 10.3 kilometers. Okay, great. So apparently, though, when she uh, traveled to university, uh, it wasn't a straight line path because before the part A told us that it took 12 kilometers. So let's just assume, right, we can make this hopefully make a little more sense. Maybe she, she drove something like this. Maybe she drove east and then had to go south. Right, and if she did something like that, then obviously it would be longer than 10.3 kilometers. Okay, just to kind of make sense of what's going on in the problem. All right, so now it says, all right, great, so we got everything set up, and now it wants to know the average velocity. So let's see um, what we are, what we're given. Okay, so let me draw, so we, so they told us the straight line distance, which is, a, which is essentially the displacement. Why? Because it is the difference between the starting point and the ending point. Okay, the exact shortest distance between the start point and the end point that is the displacement. The, remember, the distance is the total ground covered. So sometimes distance and displacement will be the same thing, but um, usually it won't be. I mean, well, not usually, but sometimes it won't be. All right, so generally speaking, uh, displacement if it's not the same as the distance, should be less than the distance, okay? All right, so that's a little trick to help you uh, determine uh, which is displacement and which might be distance. 
So this value right here is the displacement I'm gonna call x. Okay, so they gave us an x value, right? They did also tell us the time that we have to use from, it's the same time in part A, right? Uh, so it's 18 minutes, 0, 0.0 minutes. And they're asking us to solve for the average velocity, which is the question mark. So I have to ask myself, do I know a mathematical relationship between displacement, time, and velocity? And we do, right? That would be velocity, average velocity, is equal to the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Okay, wonderful. So in order to calculate velocity, I need to know displacement, I need to know time. And we know both. So let's just plug them in. So it'd be 10.3 kilometers divided by 18.0 minutes. Okay, wonderful. Now it doesn't ask us specifically what units they wanted in, so I'm just gonna leave it in kilometers per minute. So just take 10.3 divided by 18, and we come to a value of 0 0.572. And remember, three significant figures here, uh, because the values here are all three. Okay, and this is in kilometers per minute. So that would be the average velocity. Okay. Let her see. If she returned home by the same path, seven hours and 30 minutes after she left, what were her average speed and velocity for the entire trip? Okay, so um, let's, let's break this down. So in order to find, so here's part C on the, on the left-hand side. So the average speed, remember, is equal to the distance divided by the time. Now more specifically, it's equal to the total distance traveled divided by the total time that has elapsed um, in which the object was moving that distance. So in order to find then the total distance, right? Remember the frame of this problem now is she's starting at home, she drives to school, and then she drives back, okay? So she's starting at home and ends at home. So let's write that, start at home and end at home. So if the problem starts at home and then she returns back to home, what would be the total distance she traveled? Well, if it took, as it says in the problem, 12.0 kilometers to get to school, then it must also take right, 12.0 kilometers to get home. So the total distance that she would have traveled would be 12 plus 12, AKA 24. So let's write that down. So we got 24, Kilo oh, 24.0, right? 0 0.0 kilometers was the total distance. Now, what is the total time? Well, the total time, read C carefully. It says, if she returned home by the same path seven hours and 30 minutes after she left. Okay, so that means that it must have taken, right, the whole, this from the time she left home to the time she returned back home, seven hours and 30 minutes has elapsed. So that's essentially the total time that has elapsed. So let's write that in the denominator. So we got seven hours and plus, right, 30 minutes. Now the problem here is that I can't have two different time units. So do one of the two things, either convert both, either convert one unit to, either convert the minutes to hours or convert the hours to minutes. I think because everything was in terms of kilometers per minute, I'm gonna convert these seven hours into minutes, okay? So I'm gonna do that, do that on the upper left-hand uh, piece of the paper. So we have seven hours, I'm gonna convert that into minutes. So write down what you're given, seven hours. Hours on the bottom so they cancel, and I do know the relationship between hours and minutes. 60, well that's 61 minutes, 60 minutes in an hour. So now just take seven, multiply it by, 60 and we should come up with the value of 40, 420 minutes, right? Okay, great. So now what I would do is then, that's the seven hour value. Now if I wanna find the total right time, just take those minutes and add 30 to them. And then your total time now will be 450 minutes. So this is really representative of the total time. Okay, so now let me write my average speed formula over again. So average speed is equal to 24.0 kilometers divided by 450 minutes. OK, 
Okay, so when we do the math, take out the calculator. 24 divided by 450 comes out to a value of 5.3 uh, 5 5 times 10 to the minus 2. To the minus 2 kilometers per minute. Okay, great. So that is her average um, speed. All right. I use two sig figs because um, since we converted them to minutes, um, we had two sig figs in that value. Okay. So now the second part of part uh, C was what's her average velocity now, right? So let me put that in this. So we, in order to find average velocity, we need to know the total displacement divided by the total time. Okay. Now focus on the total displacement. Remember that that is simply the displacement of the or the final displacement of the object minus the initial displacement of the object. So tell me, where is the frame of the pro where is the end of the problem? Well, we said that we start at home and end at home. So the end of the problem is the displacement value at home. Okay, you might say, well, I don't know what what's the number. Don't worry about it for now. Just call it H. What's the initial displacement? Well, where is she at the start of the problem? Well, again, we're starting at home, we're ending at home, so it's also h. So what's h minus h? Zero, right? Anything minus itself is zero. So if we think about what happens when we plug zero into the numerator here, well, the average velocity goes to zero, right? That's the average velocity, that's all. So this could be in kilometers per minute, could be in miles per hour, it doesn't really matter, but it's zero. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Please do subscribe if you can. Thank you.